Welcome to this week's Swarf and Chips. Now, I'm an 80s baby, and this Taiwanese brand, Dali Machines, have been sold in the UK since the 80s too. If you don't know about this brand, then make sure you're watching this show because we're gonna be telling you why you should consider these when you're looking at your next machining center. Julian, thank you for joining me on this week's Swarf and Chips. You're very welcome. It's a oh. pleasure to be here. Yeah, well, um, I'm going to quiz you quite a lot on these machines. What your likes, what your dislikes, etc., etc. <laughs> and we'll see what we can uh, get well, out of yeah, you. Yeah, so let's see how many times that look nonplussed at some of these hands questions. But go on, please, <laughs> we'll, we'll fire go, away. <laughs> we'll go for it. Okay. Uh, right, okay, darling, what, what do you like about the machines? I think the nice thing about the Dalis is the fact that they've been around, oof, Dali itself has been manufacturing machines for 60 years now. Uh, Ward High Tech have handled the agency for over 20. There's a lot of machines out there and people do like the machines. They're extremely strong, they're rugged, they're powerful milling machines. And I think that's what I particularly like about them. Um, things have changed well, I say over the last sort of five years because Dali have responded to what the market wants as regards new processes, new ways of machining. But all in all, it's still a very good vertical machining centre, a range of machining centres. What's the range, what's the capacity of the Dali machines? Well, the Dali, really, it's like so many things in here. It's, it's, there is something for everyone, because as I said, you know, it was, once upon a time, the Dali, the name was synonymous with a heavy duty milling machine. If you look at some of the machines now, they've got 50 tapers, they've got gearbox drives, the heavy duty box guideway, extremely rigid machines. But that's not for everybody anymore, you know. The thing is, people want machines like this one, a smaller machine, a smaller footprint. They don't need 50 tapers. They perhaps they're only drilling holes. Drilling and tapping holes, you need 40 tapers. It's quite enough. But the spec's still good. It's still a quality build. And people want things like that. So you've got anything from, this is an 860, up to 2 metres. And, and bigger, 2.5 metres if you really want it. And then you go to double column machines. Any success stories out there? Well, there's quite a number. I mean, there is one particular customer in the northwest of England who's got currently running 20 of these machines. 20 machines? Uh, uh, any number of other machines as well, of course, but you know, he's got, a more, he's got a robot loading, he's got automatic loading and unloading. I think the thing is, what he really liked, this particular gentleman, he, he liked the relationship that developed over the years with Ward High Tech. So after finding out about the machine and the brand, I went to get into the machine, literally, and find out what this Dali is all about. Now, this is the MCV 1800. Paul, big machine, isn't it? Absolutely huge, isn't it? Gigantic. Mm -hmm. good, good to hear from Julian and about the Dali brand. Uh, a, a range of machines that we've been quite familiar with for some years now working with Ward High Tech. Um, seeing them in this state, though, is obviously really does do the machine justice because you can start to pick out the features and the areas that, that really do stand out. Well the walls are down on the machine and we never really get to see this angle so let's start from the bottom work our way up. The base of the machine is it a one solid piece casting? This this is I mean this this is a a huge C-frame box guideway construction machine. Um, you, tons and tons. It's about 15 tons. Might even be a bit more when you mm. when you look at the weight of the machine. And that, in itself, gives the 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 machinist and the engineer the ability to to take heavier cuts and to do more demanding applications because the vibration will dampen through the base of the machine. But not only the base of the machine. When you talk about the base of the machine, we start to look at things like these box guideways that you've got yeah. here, which are 
um, obviously exposed as well. The, the widths of the ball screws, um, how the box guideways are supported on the casting and how big that casting is. And all of those things here, um, you know, it's evident straight away that this is a very, very heavy duty machine. It certainly is. And then we're going to work a, a slightly up a little bit higher. Um, the, the motors in this spindle, what, mm. what are they called? Well, these are, this is a BBT50, so you, it means you've got face and taper connection, which means everywhere on that tool holder is essentially um, gripped inside the spindle so you've got maximum maximum grip really and maximum um, strength with that sort of system now the bt50 again is uh is a is a tall shank that's really for heavier duty cutting which again would lend itself to a machine of this size but when you look at spindles like this this particular machine is uh, can be offered it's, it's like a direct drive but it's got a, a gearbox on it as well so it means that those lower ends when you're you're searching for high torque you can really really achieve that but then ultimately if you want a bit more speed you can do that too because you've got the gearbox option so the, the machine is built from the ground up for really industrial machining but at the same time it's saying well actually utilize the size of the table and the bed yeah maybe stack up more components maybe come and do more batch work on it as well so you, you've got the capability for both Yeah, we talk about the build of the machine, which is impressive. Then we start to look at what the machine offers the engineer. And that, in a lot of instances, comes down to the capacity. Now, this has um, uh, almost a, a metre in the, in the y-axis. And as you'll have seen around the marketplace, engineers are always searching for something a, a little, little bit, bit bigger, mm -hmm. which means they've got a little bit of an edge over their competition. Now, of course, um, with extended axes, you then look to the Z, which yep. is where you're talking about here. Now, if you can get maximum... Um, you know, a maximum right. gap between the spindle nose and the table, it does mean, of course, you can not just have larger and taller components, but you could also maybe put a fourth axis unit on the machine, which you would then be able to still put larger parts on and it wouldn't encroach on the working area. Okay. So capacity is everything. Right, okay, now you've just mentioned fourth axis. I want to go over and see a machine with not only four, but five. Dali have a huge range, of course, but then we're over to the Dali DMX320 machine. Now, Paul, is this a 4 plus 1 or a 5 axis? Because I'm confused. It, this is a 4 plus 1 machine, but essentially you look at it and it's a, it's a 5 axis machine in centre. Um, and yeah, interestingly, when we see what we've just looked at with Dali, it's a massive workhorse, heavy duty machine. Then you'll get down now, you, we're focusing in a bit more now on technology. Um, speed, uh, multi-face machining, which is obviously where the DMC320 fits. DMX320. DMX320. So you've lost your table, but you've gained two more axes, right? So essentially, yeah, you've got your, you've got your trunnion table here, which is, of course, uh, driven and supported um, both sides here. Uh, you've, you've got a 350 mil swing, but if we look at the tool uh, area first and the spindle, one of the things that we talk about with the Dali machine, or certainly the guys here from Ward High Tech do, is that this ha actually has a, uh, a full power from 1500 RPM on this spindle. It's got a special FANUC driver on here. Now it means that the spindle's output is up to 15,000 RPM with 25 horsepower, but what it also means, or what that really means, is that at 1500 RPM, which is a low RPM where you really want some torque, you've still got 25 horsepower, which a lot of machines can't offer that. So if you want high speed and power, this machine does it. Now I mentioned you've got 350 mil swing, uh, which you have. It's a four plus one machine here. Um, and it's, I'd say it's very easy to get into. It's very easy to access. There's a lot of light in the machine. It comes with through spindle coolant. Um, you can have either 40 bar or sorry, 20 bar or 50 bar on the coolant. Um, and I suppose to conclude really on the specs, we're talking about a 30, 40 or 60 um, ATC on the tools so plenty to plenty to certainly look at and with it being here in, in Sheffield. Yeah but we've just talked about having a machine that is strong that is robust but do you need that on a table like this? 
what you, what you need on a machine like this is agility really. If, if you're doing five face machining what you're wanting to do is attack all those different faces and get from point to point very quickly. Therefore um, you know some of the, the box guideway constructions machines don't accelerate as quickly as what maybe a, a linear rail machine would do. Um, you know with 15,000 rpm on the spindle it means you're going to probably take less depths of cut but far faster so more of them so it's a different but strategy. that's the way that people it's, machine it, it's more a, now it's anyway. It's a different strategy and you know, I think with the fanet control that you've got to your right there on this machine this has now got some features in it within the software that have been normally associated with a Heidenhain control. Um, Heidenhain systems have been very au fait with five axis machining for many many years but now Fanuc are, are well in this market even with the entry level OIMF so there's plenty of opportunity here. Now another point that Ward High Tech make is these machines predominantly sell to their existing users of Dali yeah. which is of course what Julian's been talking about. It's not often you sell a Dali to someone and then not sell them another one. Mm. So where these machines are going are into companies that have already got Dali's and maybe already have one of these. Maybe this is their first step into five axis yeah. machining. Having now made these machines for 10 years they've got um, obviously uh, the history there now of, of providing a, a good quality product. Earlier on, Julian, you mentioned about wrapping your arms around the customer. Yes. And due to coronavirus, of course, you're not able to do that right no, now. No, not at <laughs> not, the moment. No. Not for a long time. Well, um, however, what did you actually mean by wrapping your arms around the customer? Well, metaphorically speaking, <laughs> <laughs> um, what it means is, it's, it's, there's, a, there's a bit in this business, you know, it's, it's, quite, it's quite easy sometimes to just sell something. You know, sell a machine to a guy, yes, yeah, so I want to live. Um, I want a machining centre. But the thing is, what you should you be doing? You should be saying, well, what are you, what are you look, really looking for? And finding out really what the customer really wants. And then sometimes he often wants a little bit more, but he just doesn't want to tell you. But once he does tell you, then it's a case of, well, that's when we start putting our arms around people because we start offering different things. And, oh, you're okay. We offer installation, commissioning, and delivery, and we offer finance packages and we can offer part exchange deals and we can offer various other different things and it's making the guy feel comfortable. I think the days of purely selling a machine and walking away are long gone. Absolutely. And you've got to be there to support and we've always been very, very strong on support here. And you mentioned finance there. You do some great deals uh, on your finance because of your, your, you, you have ownership of all of the machines, yes, right? Yes, we do, yeah. Well, there are some exceptionally good finance deals but they tend to be tailored to the customer's individual requirements again. It's a bit like I said earlier, wrapping your arms around the customer just doesn't involve you know, to be able to deliver a machine correctly. It's understanding what he wants, understanding how his cash flow works, and it's getting very, very close then to the customer mm. to be able to properly understand how we can then tailor a finance deal, whether it's a buy now, put a deposit down, pay, start paying again in six months, what else is he looking for? Is he looking for a slow start? Is he looking for a balloon at the end? What, what, what's going to help yeah. him the most? Because only by understanding that and getting close to the customers are we really putting our arms around somebody properly and making them feel comfortable enough to not only buy the first machine, but to be satisfied enough to buy the second, third, fourth, fifth, and, 20th. and on and on. <laughs> hopefully, yeah. Hopefully. 20th. Yeah. Thank you for watching this week's Saw and Chips, and hopefully you're more educated on the Dali range. What we'd always encourage you to do is comment in the box below. Do you have Dali machines? What do you think of them? Any positive reviews or even questions you have? Thanks for watching the show, and don't forget to keep those spindles turning.